Jens Jeb Bergenstein is the lead designer and chief creative officer of Mojang Studios. He's been co-developing Minecraft since 2010, became the main lead in 2011, and assumed full control in 2014. Known as the mastermind of Minecraft, he was also announced times 100 most influential people in the world controlling the most popular game of all time. But how did Jeb get to the position of leader of the biggest game ever and earn himself an estimated $70 million net worth? Jens Pidar Bergenstein was born on May 18, 1979 in Orbro, Sweden. He started his programming journey when he was 11 years old, using tools such as BASIC and Turbo Pascal. Using BASIC, he made small Pong-like games with the highlight of his Q BASIC career being a multiplication table training app for his math teacher. After this, he moved on to Turbo Pascal and later Borland C++, where he started to learn what he was doing rather than just trying things and seeing if they worked. At around 14, he started creating maps for Doom, saying he wasn't too good at it, but did it because he wanted to play them. He attended high school at Rubik's Gymnasium in Solatuna, Sweden. After he failed at a higher education, he got a job in Stockholm for a company called Korken. Korken went bankrupt and turned into Oblivion Entertainment in 2001. He was hired as a C++ programmer for two years, but most projects he did were canceled before release. He did some minor work on Knights of the Temple and tried to help development on Venhalla Chronicles, which he describes as the worst role-playing game ever conceived. During his spare time, he started an online role-playing game called Whispers in Akira. It peaked at 2,000 registered users and 110 active players. He quit working on it when he grew bored of the balance issues and the complaining of the community. But from this, he would meet two important people, Daniel Brinov and Ponuts Hamber. These people would be good friends of Jeb's and would start a game company called Oxen Game Studio in July 2003. During this time, he was let go from Oblivion as they ran out of money, so he decided to go back to school. So he moved to Malmo and attended Ludd University to start his master's degree in computer science. In 2004, Oxai started development of their own engine called Daisy. Their first commercial title release was called The Strategist and was sold, making it no longer available. The other title they made was a game called Harvest Massive Encounter, which you can still purchase on Steam to this day. This game would also win a second place award at the 2007 Swedish Game Awards. While researching, I found a recommendation from 2005 saying that Jeb is great and fun to work with, very focused at the task at hand and full of ideas, simply gets the job done. Just goes to show the guy that Jeb truly is. In 2008, Jeb would graduate from Lund University, earning his master's degree in computer science. Oxide would release a game called Dawn of Dara, a game inspired to improve Whispers in Akira. This project was a little too massive and due to real life problems would unfortunately see the doom of the game. At this point, Jeb needed money. And so he ended up getting a job as an IT consultant at a company called Cybercon. Then later as a server back in programmer at Planeto, being his last job before getting hired at Mojang. But Oxide would focus their attention to tech demos and game jams. Now, Jens describes a game jam as this. And a game jam is where you like focus to start from scratch and make a game in a very short period of time. I couldn't find too much on all of these, but there are three very important ones that Jeb went to. July 16, 2009, a game jam called No More Sweden would be hosted in Malmo, Sweden, which would be the first time Jens meets Marcus, who was Notch. They would meet two more times at Tig Jam in Cambridge and Big Jam in Berlin. He said that Notch was already famous for Minecraft even in 2009, so he had only met him but didn't really know him. He would also meet Daniel Kaplan at these game jams, which can be seen from a video posted on Jens' channel. The title, People Working at NMS 2010, shows Jens showing the people at the game jam with a young Daniel being captured. This would lay the foundation for Jens' huge future that would surprise everyone. In 2010, Minecraft really took off, going from an independent indie game to then being ran by a company, Mojang. Mojang would sign the papers to form on October 22, 2010, being founded by Marcus, Jacob, and Carl with the hopes of taking the success of Minecraft to new heights. But before this, on September 6, 2010, Notch would announce that he started a company with a close friend. Then he says that he's looking for people to hire, specifically a web developer to handle front-end and the back-end of web development. 
Jens would see this because on September 28th, 2010, he would make his first tweet about Minecraft talking about the idea of a Minecraft convention. His next tweet would state that he was watching Minecraft clips. Then on October 6th, Jens would tweet, looking forward to work with at Notch this winter. Natch would confirm this on October 24, saying that they will introduce themselves soon. Jins later said that he got the job not only because he met Notch a couple of times, but also because he met Daniel Kaplan. He was originally hired as a back-end developer for their second game titled Scrolls, and on the side, Jeb would help development of Minecraft. As time went on, he spent more time on Minecraft and naturally took a liking to Jins as he said they were the most similar. His first major contribution to Minecraft being the Piston, releasing on June 30th, 2011. It didn't stop there, as he would be responsible for a lot of major things including walls, villages, strongholds, fortresses, endermen, cave spiders, redstone, emeralds, enchant tables, and so many more. Jens would quickly become Notch's right-hand man and would hold this role until December 2nd, 2011. The game had been fully out for two whole weeks when Notch would announce that Jens would take the role of lead developer for Minecraft. The community took this pretty positively, giving props to Notch for letting go of his masterpiece, as well as giving flowers to the really passionate dev that is Jens. To make a long story short, Jens is responsible for every major update of Minecraft and was in full control of every single one since 1.0. Almost everything in the game today had to be ran by him to be approved, so in a way, the entire game is through his genius. He would also then take on lead dev for Minecraft Pocket Edition alongside Aaron Nemini and would do other little small things throughout the years. He also started development on a game called Cobalt with his company Oxi, which would eventually collaborate with Mojang to release in 2016, five years later. He developed a game called Catacomb Snatch in 2012 for a game jam launched by Mojang to raise money for the charity. This game was responsible for raising more than $458,000. As Notch stepped away further and further from the game, Jens would be turned to as the spokesperson for the game and quickly became the face for Minecraft. In 2013, he alongside Notch would be named one of time's most influential people in the world. The following month, he would marry his wife, Jenny Bergenston, becoming Jens and Jenny. From this point, nothing really changed until 2014, where Minecraft would enter its first major controversy. Mojang would make a statement talking about the extent to which Minecraft servers could monetize their content. In short, they stated that servers could not charge for items that affected gameplay, basically saying no pay to win stuff. But the server providers were not happy about this and hashtag save Minecraft would be seen by over 500,000 people in just a couple of days on Twitter. Minecraft started to be compared to EA and Activision with their highly restrictive digital rights management. Although nothing in Minecraft's EULA changed, people were upset that they were going to start enforcing these rules, making the game feel less free for players and server providers. Notch would go on his blog to defend this, but ultimately got a lot of hate, which led to an important tweet on June 16th saying, Anyone want to buy my share of Mojang so I can move on with my life? Getting hate for trying to do the right thing is not my gig. Shortly after, they would receive a call from Microsoft if he was serious about a deal. Other companies also approached Mojang, including Activision and Electronic Arts. Then on November 6, 2014, Microsoft would announce a $2.5 billion deal to buy Mojang, which would then promote Jens to Chief Creative Officer, overseeing everyone at Mojang Studios. In 2015, on December 10th, he would also have his first and only child, Bjorn. And today, we see Jens every year on Minecraft Live, being the replacement for Minecon, and he still oversees Mojang, just turning 45 on May 18th. Now it seems that we still have Jens for a long time as his passion has seemingly not declined even after working on a game for almost 14 years. His lead on the game is no less than amazing as the game has pretty much exponentially grown since the time he started. I can't wait to see what's to come from this guy as I think he's coming back with some good updates and overall I think Minecraft is growing for the better again. So next time you think of video games, don't forget this guy's face as he's one of the best to ever do it.